Hi everyone, I'm Melissa and this is Adele from Craft and Jute. Today we're taking some time to talk with a fellow um, customer of ours, Ann Wooster, and she's been in photography for a few years now and she'll get to her side of the story in a bit, but we just wanted to give you a chance to hear from others about uh, the necessity and the importance of packaging and her story of how she got to where she is um, and that it's not all um, rose petals along the way. So <laughs> hello Ann, how are you? And we're so glad to have you with us today. Hello, I'm wonderful. I'm super excited because I've loved Craft and Jute for a long time now. <laughs> well, we appreciate you. Um, so let, just get us started and let us know how you got into photography um, and you know what made you, you get to this point in your business. This is a time I always wish I said like I have, I have always had this passion, but it kind of grew into what it is. Um, I went to college in Duluth, Minnesota here, and I had literally no idea what I wanted to do. I actually started as a biochem major, and so like I, it took me a while to find out what I wanted to do, and I got into some photography classes, so I knew I loved it. I didn't know I wanted to do it as a career or a passion or a hobby or anything for real until after I graduated. And I was working three other jobs because I was panicking about student loans coming due. <laughs> and, um, so I kind of I had done a little bit in college and I had some people ask me like oh could you take some pictures for whatever reason I'm like oh why not and um, out of nowhere I got some interest in weddings and I started booking things and I was very lucky that I loved it because I started booking stuff right away a lot of my business and my life is based on like social connections and making connections with people. So I think that's why people are like, Oh, you're fun. Like, let's have you do that. And meanwhile, I'm like, Oh my God, what am I doing? <laughs> so it's, it's kind of grown from there. Um, I mean, having the background of the few photo classes I've done has been really great. Um, and so I knew I liked it and I had learned with film before I ever touched a digital camera really. Um, so yeah, that's, that was, Five years ago, I hit five years since my first wedding last August. I've done just over, last weekend was I think my like 111th or 112th wedding in the last five years. So it kind of, it grew quickly. Yeah, that's amazing. I think we find that with a lot of um, uh, our photographers is that it, it wasn't something you went to school for and it wasn't a plan, but it's a passion that you found that you had and it's just developed over time and um, it's become kind of a really important part of, of your life and, and now a business. So that's really cool. Yeah, I, I had a good conversation with someone yesterday about, so I know myself well enough now as an adult that I, I wouldn't be happy in um, like an office job kind of thing, which I, I love parts of that, but I know I wouldn't be as content as fulfilled as doing something on my own and I think part of when I when I started to do it it was a little bit to avoid other jobs like okay I like this I think I can be good at it I'm gonna learn about it and um it just like I said like grew from there and um I, I don't know if I would have had the willpower to go to school for something I wasn't totally sold on so I think that some of it comes from that <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay so what part about what part of photography do you love the most that, that you're just completely passionate about and you wouldn't want to not do anymore? Um, there's kind of two big ones. And I mean, it can be different days for which ones really stick with me. But really one of the main things about my job that if I ever changed careers for any reason, I would miss or need something like it is just the people. I have always been really social. I have always... Mm -hmm. um, met random people like there are stories from when I was a kid we'd be at a park and I would make like eight friends and invite all of them over for dinner and like I just always want to have that connection with people um, so that's a huge thing because you know like working on a wedding with someone it's I'm not just working that day I'm following them around on one of the biggest days of their life so a lot of photographers talk about this because it's so true and having that connection with your photographer and this is before you even get to like the work side of it that is so important and that is honestly my favorite part. Um, I love the work and I love the creative side too. Otherwise I, you couldn't do it. Um, and that's kind of my, my other thing is th the times that I'm reminded of how important the images end up being for people. Um, really like that sticks with me deeply. Um, I've had a couple clients who have lost a parent or a grandparent and have contacted me after, after just cause they're grateful to have 
something, even if it was one of the, like in passing, they're both in the shot just to have those is so meaningful. Um, my mom actually passed away a year ago and two years ago, one of my friends took some family pictures for us and I knew it was important then, but it wasn't, I, I mean, we are so grateful for the pictures now. So it's kind of like one, like I love making friends and then one like actual, it's really meaningful side. Like the, those are probably the best parts hands down. For yeah, me. Awesome. absolutely. So what would you say that is, um, something you're not too passionate about? I know we kind of talked about before this, like taxes mm -hmm. and kind of the official stuff, but <laughs> what's just one thing that sticks out in your mind that, eh. um, that the side, I kind of love some of the organizational side and like having a really nicely well-kept binder with all my wedding stuff like that. Part <laughs> is that I enjoy. Um, but yeah, some of like the taxing, the learning curve on some of that for someone who did not go to school to own a business was hard a few different times and it still can be. And on every side of this business, it's a learning process. And that's a big one for me. Um, but there's so many resources that's helped a lot and other people who can relate. Uh, and the other word is uh, sometimes I get a little overwhelmed. I don't know if that's the right word. Um, sometimes I have to disconnect from the industry a little bit. Um, I've always trusted myself to do what I feel is right for my business and right for my clients and um, kind of taking a step away from there's so many people in the wedding industry and so many different people who think that they got it down and some of they do for them, but it's so different for different people. Um, so sometimes I have to disconnect a little and some, or just kind of ignore some things and keep doing my thing because it's been working for me and working for my clients. So that's a big thing too. That's a great yeah. piece of advice. This, the stepping back and, you know, focusing on yourself and mm -hmm. what's working and not worried about what all 10 of the wedding experts are saying <laughs> and trying to do it all because you yeah. get so distracted with that and overwhelmed. That is yeah. a big, and big thing. One of those, th one of them too, is it's, I try to do that and not talk about it. There's, it's so easy in this, in, in like with Instagram and I've been trying to Instagram, do Instagram stories more and kind of do more of that. Um, but it's so easy to get caught up on talking about every little thing. And then I feel like it kind of undermines, like if I'm going to take a step back and just keep posting my wedding pictures and doing my thing. And, um, I try not to like make a thing about it. I want it to just be what it is and then I'll come back refreshed and it doesn't have to be a big deal kind of thing. And I feel like it's super easy for that to get out of hand with yeah. social media. Everything. <laughs> I think life in general gets out of hand like that. Yeah. <laughs> So you have been a loyal customer to us for, we figured up well over three, three and a half, maybe four, four years, years now. Something like that. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about the process that you went through when you started thinking of packaging and what you all started with and where you went and how you ended up at Craft and Jute. Um, just walk us through that. Um, well, part of the reason I was thinking it was earlier I'd bought things is because I've never bought from any other packaging place like early, my earlier parts of my career. Um, I, it was kind of out of necessity at first. I booked a couple of weddings. I had some sessions. I wanted to offer CDs or DVDs at that time. And I was making one and I'm like, what am I putting this in? Like, I can't just like put this in an envelope and be like, there you go. <laughs> um, so I ended up talking to a friend at the time. I was working at a coffee shop as well um, and got to know a graphic designer. He did one of my rounds of logos actually uh, and his wedding photographer had had something through craft and jute and he's like oh yeah it was great you should check them out and it was like that night i went online and i bought some cd sleeves and kind of it took off from there as far as you guys are always the first place i would check for stuff and i've gone through some rounds i've always had something from craft and jute um, but i've gone through some cycles of switching to USB and then I've had boxes for the last year and now I'm switching back to just little wraps with the USB drives. Um, part of that for me was switching to USB drives. I wanted to go all out and get engraved ones and really go for it. But at the time when I first wanted to, I couldn't really afford what I wanted. <laughs> so I did USBs and I would mail them in envelopes and I had like craft and jute, like the, print release forms and that kind of thing. Um, when I finally invested in doing boxes, I loved the tangible product aspect of it. Having something from all this work in person, all this work on my computer, 
having the tangible box with some prints and the USB drive was really satisfying for me. Um, and I was hoping it's satisfying for clients as well. And, and I think it is. I think it's, it's fun to get a package in the mail and have those things and have some prints right there. And hopefully that will encourage people to print. Um, but this year, one of my, my problem was I've really taken, uh, made some big changes in my personal life um, environmentally. And I keep thinking, I just was kind of stuck on like the boxes I was getting. If I'm going to spend money on the presentation of the product, I want it to be 100% worth it. So the, the boxes, I'm like, is this something that gets set on a shelf and just gets moved around a lot? And you have the USB out, the prints are all out. So like, is this something that just ends up hanging out and sitting? So I was really torn, like, do I want to do that again? Like, um, which is why I kind of did the Instagram story. I did get some feedback from clients. A few people love the boxes. A few people were like, we were in it for the USB drive and the prints. And like, they love the idea of a nicer USB drive because that's like the, the main thing there. Um, so yeah, so I officially made the decision to switch away from boxes and I still want a really finished look. So that's kind of where, I, where I'm at now. I want it to be really polished and professional, but not excessive. That's kind of how I want my business to be anyway. Like I don't want to get too out of hand, but I want it to look great. <laughs> um, it's good so, that you say yeah. that. Sorry to interrupt. Um, no, you're good. One of the things that we try to focus on is still providing packaging that is professional looking, but it's not luxury and you're not spending an arm and a leg because I know that's hard to really incorporate back into your pricing structure and you have to accommodate for that. So some of the newer solutions that we've come up with, um, you know, are more economical mm -hmm. that maybe are even reusable in some ways for clients. Um, and so we try to keep that in mind too. So it's really good to hear that you think along the same lines as how we're trying yeah. to position mm -hmm. things too. So, and it's, it's something I, I'm never against like having a luxury thing, but I, I feel like there's a, some priorities in that that I want to keep too. Um, I want the luxury part. So I, you guys, I know, no, I just ordered the, go, the USB drives um, from you guys. So that was, I'm like, this is what I'm sending. This is the main thing. So if I'm going to go all out and spend, spend a little more, the USB drives I had before weren't, I mean, they worked fine. They were functional, but they weren't, awesome. So I'm like, if I'm going to spend this amount of money on it, I want it to be on the part that people are going to touch and use whenever they want to access their photos. Um, so that's kind of why I'm like, why this box is in the way. <laughs> like, um, I'm still trying to decide how I want to actually mail like with the sleeve and that kind of thing. And I still want to do some prints and a thank you card and that kind of thing. Um, so that's a part of, that's still kind of up in the air. Um, I'm kind of, I just figure that out as I go. I'm trying to buy more, um, envelopes and things made from re recycled materials and I want to look into some more of that um but yeah like you that's one thing people sometimes get caught up with like if it's going to be luxury we need to do all the bells and whistles I'm like no it can just be really nice and professional and that's kind of what I want yeah yeah and I think like a point like you're trying to make and stuff is that the USB is what is holding all those memories and everything that you were talking about and just having mm -hmm. that even be just so much nicer is kind of a really good thing and I was thinking about that with like the filler for the for the boxes too and it was definitely um the, the filler was another thing that I felt like was kind of in between like getting in the way um some things need the filler just to keep things safe but that's just one part that I was like why why do I have all this extraneous stuff like getting a nice envelope that's awesome and keeping things safe but I'm like why I don't need all that extra stuff or a nice labeling too I love that um, so yeah, that's, that's totally like, I want to keep it focused, I think is the best way to put that. I think I finally got there. Absolutely. <laughs> so what are, um, three tips that you could give, um, other photographers that are like searching for packaging? Um, how do they go about kind of starting? Um, one thing I'm trying to think. So my main tip for literally any photographer on any topic, and it's the first thing I thought of. <laughs> is do what's right for you between other photographers, other creatives, wedding blogs. There are so many opinions out there and there are not, not any, not all of them, but there are people who 
kind of present it like they know what's best well instead of what's best for them so my first tip is do what's right for you and do what's right for your clients like those go hand in hand if you're booking the clients you want to book when like when I decide not to do boxes I'm not gonna have clients that are that booked me because of all my luxury bells and whistles kind of thing um, so that's my first thing um, my second tip would be um, kind of if you're worried about the financial side or the commitment side you're worried about really getting everything all at once do a little at a time that's kind of what I did at first um, like I'm like oh well, I'm gonna get really nice CD sleeves to protect the CDs and then I moved on like I'm gonna get an actual nice printed print release form and do like return address and do it a little at a time especially if you're starting out um, if you're already established and you're in the middle of the process um, talk to your designer uh, my designer's phenomenal I actually didn't talk to her about packaging but she was phenomenal and we had a great experience and really encompassed me and my business into my marketing so it made it easier to choose packaging that went along with that um, so that would probably be my other big thing and also just research the company is probably the last thing I didn't have to because I've just always went with like I have other places I go through move for printing cards and stuff and I have my favorite companies and it's so great to know there's these companies I trust that I work with often it's a great feeling to not have to worry about that anymore well, we appreciate uh, that, and we yeah. hope we continue to support you in that way. Um, I, you know, I appreciate your time today, and I think we'll round Thank out you. the video so it's not too long for everybody mm -hmm. to watch. Um, but we'd love to be back in touch with you and keep, you know, keep you in touch with rest of the photographers that are on Craft and Jude and following. And um, do you care if people reach out and comment directly to uh, you or anything like that? That would be awesome. I'm getting a little more into. Um, well, with my, I'm moving as well, so I'm trying to stay connected to a lot of parts of the, the industry. But I'm get, trying to do a little more with reaching out to other people not, or putting myself out there for them to reach out to me via Instagram stories and things. And um, I'm, I've gotten really passionate about some of my ideas about the industry, like the ones I've talked about a little bit here. So um, if anyone at, has any questions, I would love. And I love talking to people, so <laughs> that's great. <laughs> All right. Well, we appreciate your time today, Anne, and we'll definitely be in touch more. And thank you, everybody, for watching. If you have any questions, just give us um, a message on Facebook or email us at hello at craftandjute.com, and we're happy to connect with you. Yeah, and we'll link awesome. all of Anne's information, too, so you can uh, access that easily and get a hold of her if you would like to. Awesome. Thank you so much, you guys. You're welcome. Thank You're welcome. you. Have a good day, everyone. Bye-bye.